Okay, hello friends, here we go. So let me just show you my reference photo. I did a few leaves. Of course, there's nothing wrong with these, but for me, um, and I do have had feathers that are very, you know, feathery like this, <laughs> a lot of lines, but I really liked being able to use this wet in wet technique where I went back in and kind of let the watercolors blend and move and kind of do the work for me. And that's what I talk about a lot is the beauty of watercolors is if you practice enough, you can really get to a point where they will do all the work for you. So today, again, I'm using the Violet Purple Prussian. Sorry for the camera bump there. Um, I've got my two things of water. And let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with that middle vein of a um, feather. And I'm using black and purple because in particularly... I had someone ask me for that color. Let me grab my palette real quick. So I'm going to mix my colors on this palette. And there's the purple, the violet purple I'm going to be using. So I've got two different concentrations of it. This one has less water, this one has more water. And then my Payne's Gray, which I love Payne's Gray. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of purple to it so it kind of has that hue. And that's where we're going to start. So get a very light uh, value of your Payne's Gray. You can use black too, that's fine. So I have a little bit more water in it. And let's just start by using your round brush. So I've got the belly of the brush quite full of paint and very translucent. So I'm going to draw that center part of the leaf. Then I'm going to go in and you know feathers are all different so you know use what what you've seen. I do notice they seem to get a little fatter at the bottom. And I'm going to do one side at a time because I want to get that spread of the paint. So now you're going to go back in and do this light wash. Go ahead, I will link it in the bottom, but go back to my wet on wet technique and that's some of the techniques I'm going to be using here. So I'm just doing a light wash of color in the background. Now, the better the paper is you use, the better you will get this beautiful spread. We want this to stay kind of wet because I'm going to be using purple and black and I want them to really spread together. Another thing I'll just touch on here is I like to use, keep some white in all of my paintings. I think it creates interest. So I'm going back into my purple just a little bit. It's quite trans translucent. I'm not using the darker shades yet because we want to build. So we start light and I'm just going to kind of go along this vein here and start adding in some color, just dabbing, spreading. I will be doing a uh, video I was hoping today but not sure if I will get to that or not um, of pulling pulling paint pushing paint which is kind of what I'm doing here I'm pushing the paint around I'm really letting it do its thing now we're going to continue to get darker and darker so right now I'm just playing with the paint going to get a little bit more black and just going to start kind of drawing these lines that represent a leaf. For me, the way, you know, I'm not much of a realistic painter. 
I like to give that feel of what I'm painting because I think what that offers, now that was quite dark, what that offers is it gives you, the person looking at my art, the ability to kind of fill in the blanks. Now, all of the crow feathers that I find here, they always have these little cute little hairs in the bottom. So I'm doing that. Now we're going in, I'm going to use a little bit darker purple, so less water, a little bit more opaque. Again, we're not dripping wet, and I'm going back and forth into my black and my purple here. I'd love to see this feather that um, this person is painting, and I'm just making these strokes, maybe add a little bit more water here, that represent, that give you the idea that this is a leaf. And then you can go back in and using the very tip of your brush, so you want to hold your brush up straight. And you barely want to put pressure and just add these little hairs, or feathers, I guess. Right, and we're just, this is the first layer, so don't get too caught up in it being perfect. That's one thing I enjoy so much about watercolors is it's not perfect and the happy little mistakes that you get. So see, it's starting to look more like a feather here. Making sure you don't fill in every space on your paper. You know, leave some white space that is going to give your viewers, maybe not your viewers, but somebody looking at your painting the ability to use their imagination and kind of fill that in. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of water here just to blur that line a little bit. And then I'm going in with some darker colors. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of purple here because she said her feather had some purple. And I love that you said it was a crow feather because when I lived at the beach for years, I became quite good friends with the crows. I would feed them. They would come see me every morning. One even had a, they had babies and brought their babies here, which was adorable. I even named them all. So I'm, I'm going in and I'm just, you know, giving these, this look of a feather. Now, another little fun technique you can do is rinse your brush, dry it off, and you can pull some color out. With a dry brush, you just lift the color out, wipe it off, maybe lift it off. So see this beautiful blending of the colors. You've got blacks and purples, so beautiful. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my Payne's Gray and just adding in around the spine. Just really kind of let your imagination play. But this is so beautiful because this is where you really trust that the watercolor is going to create something beautiful. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and let's work on the other side. So I'm going to go back to my more translucent version of that Payne's Gray. So adding a little bit more water and I'm going to draw that other side. So let's see, let's make this side a little bit different because for the most part, 
their feathers are pretty consistent, but I used to notice sometimes they'd have a really wonky feather sticking out on one side. By the way, I, I named them. Um, so there you go. Now I'm going to fill it in with just a light wash, which is a very watered down version. Uh, I, I called them sticks and twigs. Everybody thought I was crazy, by the way, yes. I think people liked it, but they were like, uh, the crazy artist. So doing a very light wash, remembering to not just completely color it in, like we maybe did as a child with our coloring books. Leave white space because that, again, that creates interest. It allows you or whoever's looking at your painting to fill in the blanks. And that's really interesting for the eye. So now I'm going to go along that vein with my par purple. And that purple is a little bit stronger in color. So just kind of, and look at that. The paint does it for you. It says, okay, yep, yeah, let me do this for you. So this is the technique of wet in wet, and you get these beautiful spreads. Look at this, how beautiful. Now this is pushing and pulling the paint, and I'm going to have a tutorial on that where you're pulling that paint into the painting. You're pulling it wet on wet. So what do you think so far? I'm going to use a little bit more of that black. And let's go in. Now look at that wet on wet. How beautiful is that, you guys? When you tap it, that black just spreads so beautifully. It does the work for you. and you almost don't have to do anything. It almost paints itself. Making sure you preserve those white and light areas. I wish that I could see what you guys are doing because I would love, now that's one of the reasons I enjoy teaching so much because I could actually sit right there with you one of these days, I'm going to do a retreat in France. How cool would that be? That's on my vision board. So we're just making some little feathery type of dabs. Now make sure you're also not overworking this. So right now, I could really quit. But I'm going to add a little bit more of that feathery look. And I think I might darken some of these areas, just dabbing in there while it's wet. I'm gonna get a little bit more Payne's Gray, like that, and then maybe pulling it. There we go. And like I said, it's so cute. They always, their feathers always have these cute little stray feathers, right? Down here in the bottom. I always thought that was so funny. So just paint a couple of those. And then maybe add. So now, see, I could almost start overworking this. And we want to be careful of that. If you want to soften some of these edges, just go in with a little bit of water. I hope this is helpful for you, and I'm so grateful to the person that sent this to me. I thought, oh, that is fun. So you can go back in and add some filling detail with just the tip of your brush. Something like that. So now I am overworking it a little bit. 
Gonna add some water on the edges. So there you go, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I, I would love for there to be a way that I can see what you're creating and your questions. Thank you so much. So there you go. Enjoy, and I hope this inspires you to paint. I will put the link to my wet on wet tutorial in the bottom and send me any questions. I'll try and help you as much as I can. Have a great day.